What's up, Dan Blewett here. Let's talk about fungo hitting skills. So first thing, let's discuss bats. So this is obviously a full size bat and you can certainly hit ground balls and fly balls with these. But as a coach, if you're gonna hit 100, 200, 300 ground balls or fly balls in a day, this is gonna wear you out and you're gonna get tired pretty quick. So most coaches will use a fungo bat, which I don't have one here with me, but they're just like this little league bat. They're just a little bit longer. They're about 36 inches. They have a skinny barrel. They're very light, usually made out of wood, and they're very easy to whip through the zone. So you can hit the ball really far, you can place it easily, and they don't tire you out nearly as fast. So this is an okay choice. This is your second best choice. A, like a small little league bat is a great choice for hitting ground balls and fly balls because they're light, they're easy to, and, and accurate to use. And then if you have a fungo bat, even better. Okay, so let's talk about how to hit a good fly ball. So number one, a lot of coaches who maybe don't have a really long baseball history have a tougher time hitting good fly balls to their outfielders. And a lot of times you'll see coaches hitting with one hand and this really just isn't ideal because you can't generate enough bat speed typically to hit a really high fly ball that will challenge an outfielder and replicate game situations. So it's ideal to use two hands on the bat, number one, and then there is some technique to help you hit better fungos and better, more repeatable fly balls. So when I use the term fungo, it just means to, that's the term for hitting any practice fly ball or ground ball. We use a fungo bat typically, and we kind of refer to everything as fungos, but we're gonna hit fly balls in this video today. And so here's the general technique. I'm gonna use this little league bat, which is the best choice if you don't have a fungo bat. So number one, you're gonna take your normal two-handed batting stance with your hands right here, just like this, and you're just gonna take your bottom hand off. So this hand is ready in the position that you want it. And then after that, I'm gonna square up to my, my intended target. And then the biggest thing here is the toss. So if you're really hasty with your toss, if you're just going really fast and your tosses are all over the place, your fly balls are gonna be very inconsistent too. So just like a hitter is very deliberate in the game, about everything he does, we wanna make sure our toss is very consistent. So I'm gonna line my feet up just like I'm hitting. I've got my top hand on the bat. I'm gonna to toss the ball up, really just to about eye level, slightly out in front of my body. So this is about where I would make contact with a ball in a game, like a line drive. And so I'm gonna to toss it a little bit out in front of my left leg here. And then lastly, to hit a fly ball, we're gonna get under it just a little bit to make it easier to lift it. So if you're swinging down, it's gonna to be tough to lift the ball. So again, the consistent toss, just like if you're a tennis player, is extremely important to getting consistency in your fly balls. And lastly, you don't have to swing super hard to get it far out there, to get some good height on it. All you have to do is have a good consistent toss, a good uphill swing, and you're gonna let your hands do the rest. All right, so now I'm gonna end this video with a quick slow motion, just so you can see all the moving parts of a good fly ball swing. Now today, fly balls are difficult in their own right, but pop-ups are even harder, especially to get them to the catcher. Because to hit a ball straight up in the air, it, it requires an extremely precise contact with the ball to get it to go to the exact upward angle that you want. So with a regular fly ball, if I'm hitting to my outfielders, I'm gonna toss somewhere out in front here. This is kind of my intended toss. So I can make contact out in front and propel the ball pretty far into the outfield. However, if I'm gonna hit it higher up in the air, the biggest thing that changes is my toss. I'm gonna to make a slightly higher toss, and I'm gonna go, instead of getting the ball out in front, I'm gonna go up and meet the ball here. Because if I'm gonna to try to get this steeper angle, I wanna have my bat going steeper, and I wanna make contact with the ball higher up. This is one of the hardest fungo skills to develop, and it takes practice. So, you're never gonna get these perfectly every time. If you're trying to hit 10 pop-ups to your catchers, you might hit two deep fly balls, you might hit four in the infield, and you might hit two or three to your catchers. The more you practice, the better it will get. So I'm gonna show you here real quick uh, on slow motion, 
just the mechanics of a good pop-up and then I'll show you a couple uh, in real time here as well. Okay, so here's a couple good uh, high catcher pop-ups or infield pop-ups. So I'm, again, I'm going to toss it higher up and then I'm going to get under the ball. That one's ending up a little bit foul. And that was a good one. So that's going to come down just a little bit behind me. So again, the keys here, number one, are practice. These are not easy. These do not work well at all one-handed. So going higher up and climbing the ladder to get it is the way to hit a good infield or catcher pop-up. So there's two types of ground balls that you want to hit. Number one are choppers, and those are the short ones that will stay on the infield grass that an infielder would charge and have to move through. And then there are the standard harder ground balls that we actually want to get a little bit of a, like a line drive, a little bit of a carry to them initially. So we're not going to hit all of our ground balls right into the ground, but some of them will kind of have a little bit of backspin, carry for about 50 or 60 feet, you know, 15, 20 meters, and then start to bounce and get through the infield. So especially on fields that don't have very short, fast grass, like in a lot of high school fields, they'll have thicker grass, and it's actually tough to get a ground ball through it. That's why we want a little bit of carry, so it has you know, maybe, like I said, 15, 20 meters in the air, and then it'll have a couple skips before it gets to our infielder. So let me show you what those look like. So our cameraman here is gonna come a little bit behind me so you can see how these ground balls are gonna carry a little bit farther and not just bounce right away. So this is type number one. I'm gonna aim, you know, 20 meters out in front. And you're gonna see it's gonna carry a little bit before it starts to bounce. Those are gonna be the hard ground balls that we want our infielders to field that are gonna replicate, again, the, the standard hard hit infield ground ball where they're gonna to have to range to their left to their right and work on fielding, uh, you know, balls with some speed behind them. And then, I've got one more here. If we wanna do an infield chopper, we're just gonna start here and we're gonna angle down and a lot of times I'll choke up on the bat. So with hitting infield ground balls, the big technique here to get some carry on it is just to have the toss out in front and try to hit the bottom half of the ball. So we're, we're having a, a relatively level swing just trying to get a little bit of carry initially rather than beating it right into the ground. But when we want to get a chopper that's going to force our infielders to charge and again move through, I'm just going to choke up a little bit higher on the bat and then I'm going to beat it into the ground right away to get a good couple skips and hops so they have to move in and work on you know charging and throwing across the diamond. All right, so those are the two main types of infield ground balls. Okay, so final word on hitting good infield and outfield fungos. Coaches, just remember, it takes practice just like the work that your players put in. So it's very, very important, especially with fly balls, to get them really high up into the sky. That's how kids learn to judge these really big pop-ups, the balls that will swirl up in the wind, the ones that get lost in that high sky when we don't have any clouds. So, you know, I, I really highly recommend against doing the one-handed fungo because you just can't generate enough power for the vast majority of coaches. So just getting comfortable with two hands, just like your players have to get comfortable with new drills is a really important thing. And remember, just like anything else, with practice, all of these get better. So take it upon yourself to consider it a challenge that, hey, maybe I can get one or two really good catcher pop-ups today, but my goal by the end of the summer is to get five or six out of every 10. Uh, again, all these skills take practice. They're not easy, so stick with them and your players will benefit a lot from in the long run, I promise you that. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next video.